Hello everybody, this is Jeff and I am back with you for part three of my mini cocktail build step-by-step uh, -step guide and um, I will not uh, waste any time getting into it but I do want to say I hope that you enjoyed uh, part uh, two and that you got something out of that putting together video. Uh, this one is going to be the painting video. Um, there may be a there's section here towards the, the uh, beginning that you may just want to skip over some of it um, because I just ended up filming the whole part of my first coat. Um, but you know, you can watch the whole thing if you like as well. So um, without further ado, uh, here is the painting of the cabinet and the bezel. Uh, I'll show you how I do that and uh, get through to uh, to part four later, uh, which will be the electronics. So here comes part three. All right, guys, here we are with the painting. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the first coat on tonight. Uh, the paint that I use is uh, you can't read it completely, but it's Rust Oleum Painter's Touch uh, Ultra Cover, uh, and it's a gloss. And this is a deep blue, and um, another shot of that. If you want to end up finding some of that, but uh, this is a deep blue. I have a, a black down there, and I actually have a brown. I've not used the brown, but I've just done blue and black uh, upon request. And um, I particularly like—I don't know—I like both of them. But uh, I'm going ahead and doing a blue. And uh, what I use is. Um, I use these small little rollers like this, right, that are for cabinets and doors, and it's really just a foam roller. Uh, and uh, this ends up with a really nice uh, smooth coat on this MDF wood. Um, and then I've just got some paint brushes here for uh, some of the spots where I can't use the roller. Um, you know, you're going to end up in, in here with the uh, with the paintbrush as well, but uh, I like these little purdy brushes. Uh, this one's kind of messed up, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to use it, but it's got the little angle on it. But uh, anyway, you can use, use whatever brush you want. It's just painting. So I'm going to go ahead and just um, show you a little bit of painting. I don't know if I'll necessarily film the whole thing, but I'll go ahead and just um, show you how it goes on. Okay. And of course this is all water-based paint, so it's going to come off of your hands and whatnot. Okay. That's actually really nice. Very nice looking blue there. And it, it'll, uh, doesn't take too long to do the painting because it's not a real big thing, but, you know, what, Spend a little time getting it all on there and getting it nice and smooth. And then this is the first coat, so um, you can kind of lay it on thick if you want. And uh, if you got some bubbles and runs and things like that on this coat, it doesn't really matter because uh, we're going to put another coat on. And before we put the other coat on, uh, I'll show you we're going to sand it down. So we put the first coat on, sand it down, uh, and then that makes for a nice smooth second coat but I really like this I just opened this can up um, I had the other another one before that was blue I like that a lot that is very nice looking color okay so I do the sides first and then what I'll do is I'll I'll flip it over uh, and set this on like a box or something so that it's all um, not touching and then I do the bottom last. Uh, well, that's that went on pretty good, pretty smooth. So I'll just keep filming a little bit here. We'll see. I might end up cutting it off. I go too long. But like I said, first coat here. But you can get a lot of this stuff with the roller. Now I'll need to get in here with the with the brush you want to get all these seam lines right there and uh, I had a bug in here driving me crazy you want to get inside here too 
right, on the inside of here because that's going to be exposed. You're going to see some of that. And then I tend to, to, to paint these two um, just in case any tiny little spots exposed. Um, on these, I may end up painting them black um, just because it's a black bezel. Um, but we'll see. So I just throw a little paint on there for that one. Right, and I'll come back with my brush. really glob it in there so it's all blue you might want to do the brush first because I want to go back I'll have to want to go back over it with the roller now but like I said, this is just painting. Not a big deal. But the paint job has held up really well uh, so far on all the ones that I've done. At least that I know of. Certainly haven't had any complaints from others. Uh, go ahead and go down through here on this one. Just get this nice and smooth. But like I said, this is first coat. Second coat, I won't even use a brush. And uh, the way this is going on, I'm not going to need much of a second coat. Uh, but I will, even if it's a light coat, because you want to sand off all the little tiny pieces. Um, and then, uh, what I use, I'll show you here. I just use one of these sanding blocks. Um, you can see that side's been blue and that side's been black, but it doesn't really matter. But these things are really nice. It's kind of like a drywall sanding block. And uh, let me just spin this around. But this is a nice thick paint too. This really nice. I like the way this glides on with these um, foam rollers. Really, really nice. I did. I the first one I ever did. It, it's. I mean, it still turned out really good. But uh, I did it all with a brush. And uh, I think the first couple I did, I did with brushes. And then I realized, why don't I try these rollers? And they really turned out. A lot better. Okay, let me get my brush here. I like to go ahead and get the inside of here. Well, actually, I don't have to worry about that inside. This one for the SD card, you will see some of that. Um, so I like to get the inside of that small hole there. Um, the other two, it doesn't matter because they're going to be covered. Uh, with the power supply and the test switch. So that's not a problem. Side of this one. I'm just going to film all this just to see how long it takes. Uh, may or not, may not show you all of it, but I think so far it's really come and gone good. I, I'm very happy with uh, how things are coming together. Hope you're getting something out of this. I figure it's a step by step, so painting's a big step. Just showing you what I use. 
I know uh, when I first started doing this stuff, I paid close attention to what people used, and I went and got that stuff and was very happy. Whatever it may be. Okay. And spin it around. I'm going to go ahead and just do the brush part first. Go ahead and get in there. Get that well. paint. I was so happy with it the very first time. I went out on Amazon and uh, made sure I got exactly the same stuff because Home Depot wasn't carrying it anymore for some reason. And uh, so I went out and got that Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch Ultra Cover and uh, very happy with it. There we go. Why not do it all right? No harm. But, you know, you don't have to. Just throw in a coat of paint on it. Not sure why, but... There. Makes me feel better. <laughs> uh, okay. That is looking good right there. All right now I just have to get a small box and I will do the bottom. So hold on one second. Let me find a box. Is that going to be tall enough? Yes. Okay now of course, now that I've painted those, this is a little tricky, but see, not too heavy. If I can pick it up with one hand like that and then bring it down, I'm going to get some of it on my fingers, but there. All right, so now nothing's touching, and now we can just do the bottom. I'm not sure how much you can see that, but lot of cover on the bottom you can really lay it on thick down here and the only thing that'll go on the bottom is the feet I'll put the little rubber feet on there and I'll tell you this later probably as well but uh, one thing that I found that helped a lot uh, because if, if you know if you play Pac-Man like I play Pac-Man or any of these games for that matter I really kind of you know go crazy on that joystick uh, and uh, even with the rubber feet it still slid around a little bit um, so what I ended up doing you know depending on the table you used but what I ended up doing was finding these cheap little um, they're like dinnerware they're in the dinnerware section and they're for plates and they're little rubber placemats and I put that down and then put it, even with the feet, I just put it down and then the feet, the feet are on top of that. And I put that down on the table first. And uh, I usually ship a piece with anybody I make it for, I'll ship them a piece. And I'll tell you, it works great. Really, really nice the way that turns out because you can just wail away on that joystick on Pac-Man uh, or any game. and. Uh, it doesn't move. It doesn't move a bit. All right, very happy with how this paint's turning out. This could be better than the original, even if it's the same thing. The can looked a little different. 
but everything was the same as far as the name brand and stuff. All right, I gotta get uh, I gotta get down in these seams here, which again I should have done first because now I'm gonna have a big globs of paint to spread around. But I'm talking to you guys and filming and everything, so I'm a little distracted. But I think I'm doing a pretty good job of not allowing myself to get too distracted to screw something up. Okay. Alright, that's one side. Let me go ahead and just roll that out. And this will darken, right? This is considered deep blue. Starts off light, but turns out the, as it dries, it'll darken. Okay. Almost there, guys. Almost there. I got a blue shirt on, so that helps if I get any paint on it, I suppose. Not that I'm too worried about this one. It always takes the longest. Just smooth this out. It's actually so much faster with this little roller. Nice. too crazy because it's the first coat and done. There's the first coat. Show you guys what that looks like. Looks like it took me 15 minutes. 17 minutes is on the, the video here. So not bad for a first coat. Right? Looks pretty good. Let me just back up like this. And there we go. There's the first coat. I will come back and uh, show you the uh, sanding part uh, a little bit, probably, and uh, may or may not show you the second coat, but uh, we'll see how it goes. But I'll be back so, soon. Bye. I had a few more minutes. I was so distracted, started cleaning up, and realized that I didn't do the control panels. Um, so control panels were pretty quick. Uh, I, even though this almost all of the the top is going to be covered with graphics. Um, the only parts that will be seen will be seen is around the edges. Um, I go ahead and just you know just do the whole thing. So uh, just protects the wood a little bit, but uh, seems to work out just fine. Just wanted to show you that. So there's the two control panels, and uh, of course the cabinet. And uh, we'll be back. Uh, I'll be back here uh, in a bit for the second coat and the sanding, and uh, I'll show you some more of that later. Okay, everyone, uh, on to the bezel. Uh, we're going to go ahead and paint that. Um, I've uh, got the first coat on this, uh, and it's nice and dry. I'm going to go ahead and sand this down, and we'll put another coat on that as well. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and do this first so that this has a chance to dry. Um, and uh, just to point out that this turned out pretty good. Very happy with how that turned out. Um, you can see all the buttons there, no problem. 
and uh, all these holes are lining up just fine. Um, but let's see if you can see that. You can see that uh, you've got your blue piece of three three quarter inch wood, and then there is a small border uh, around this. So what I will do all the way around, I just happen to know because uh, I just measured it again to be sure, but I'll show you, is that we are at an inch and a half right to the edge of that. So what we want is we want a black edge all the way around here that's an inch and a half. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do, I just want to show you that, I uh, had it in place, that's how I measure it, because um, then you can measure to see, you know, because depending upon the border that you have, what kind of monitor you have, it might be a little bit more, might be a little bit less. Um, you've got a little bit of leadway. If you go a little bit past an inch and a half, that's fine because the, or at least with the Arcade SD and I think the 16 ones, they don't completely fill this whole screen. Um, there is a little border there, but it looks good. Inch and a half, it will look nice here. And uh, I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Okay. So, all I need for this is a straight edge. Um, I like to clamp it down. Uh, so, uh, I've just measured over. I've drawn myself a little line here. I'm an inch and a half in on the... So, oh, the, the most important part is, is that uh, the side that you want up, you want to flip it over because we want to work on the bottom side, so the down side, right? Because uh, what we're going to do is, is we're going to do an inch and a half around and we're going to peel this plastic away all the way around, but we want that on the opposite side, okay? So you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, so I've got my line there, but I'm going to go ahead and take my straight edge. Put it back on the line and then I like to just make sure and clamp it. Nice little thin ruler. And I just kind of hold that down in the middle and then I just got my little utility knife. Um, whatever you got, for, maybe you got an X-Acto knife or something. And we don't have to, to go very deep, um, just enough to uh, cut the, the small plastic film that's on here. Uh, and then you want to just go maybe, you know, not all the way to the edge, but, you know, just, you know you're going to be an inch and a half in here somewhere, so like an inch, inch inside, right? And then I just kind of like that. Okay. And that's one out of four. So... Uh, let me just go around this way. Okay, we'll go to this side next. And we'll go ahead and measure in an inch and a half. Pencil doesn't show up really well on this, but it uh, still works okay. It's good enough for me. I can see it. You can use a marker if you want, but uh, I just tend to use pencil all the time. And I don't actually have to draw the line. I can just bring this over. If that looks good enough to me, I'll clamp it down. Make sure it doesn't move. Hold it down in the middle a little. Again, I'm not putting a lot of pressure on this. Just enough to cut through that little thin piece. And we'll go ahead and mark this one here. Inch and a half, inch and a half. I do three marks so that I make sure that I'm in there. I, I line up the bottom two. And make sure that that third one's in there just to make sure I get all the marks the way I want them. That's my habit. If you know what I'm talking about, when I'm marking things to measure out, I don't just put one at the end and one here because one of those might be off. So you want to put at least three. Uh, and if it's a longer period, I'll do maybe four even. And then you want all those marks to be able to line up so that you have the right measurement. 
Okay, and then this has got that hole there, so I don't need to go any further than that hole. And the last one. That'll be nice. Okay, now uh, I'm going to go ahead and peel it off now so that you can see um, since I've got it sitting like this, but then I have to be very careful. Um, what you want to do actually, uh, you know what, I'll do it, I'll do it the way I, I'm supposed to. Uh, you want to peel it off and as soon as you peel it off you start putting down the, the paint because you don't want any little specks getting on there. So uh, I'll show you that. I'm going to take it outside. Uh, I'll be right All right, back. we're outside now. So I will show you. Uh, basically, we'll just go ahead and peel this off. Okay. So as we peel this off, we want to make sure to keep that edge clean. And also, as it comes up, we want to make sure that that corner doesn't come up because that middle piece is the piece of plastic we don't want to come off. Because all we're going to do is we're going to spray this whole thing around the edge and that's the only part we want to touch is the edge. Okay? So, that came off nicely and now it's super clean and uh, I'll just show you that basically I've got the Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch Ultra Cover Semi-Gloss Black. I hope I got enough left in here. But uh, you want to coat it on pretty, pretty thick, because um, otherwise you'll actually be able to see through it. Um, and if you get some runs, it's okay because the other side is what matters. And you'll see what I mean. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray this down. said make sure you get it on there nice and thick that's why you don't have to worry about two coats because look two coats wouldn't work I don't think you don't want it to stay on there too long that other piece of plastic okay I think that's good wait a minute that edge right over there you can kind of tend to see if you can see through it not quite thick enough. This will take a little while to dry. So we'll just leave this out here. So you go, see, it's nice and thick. Right, and then when that dries, then we'll then we'll be able to peel this whole piece up. Okay? And you'll see what the other side looks like. And we'll go ahead and let that dry and then I'll go back in and work on the second coat on the cap. Alright guys, uh, I'm going to show you, uh, again, this is just a drywall uh, sandpaper, um, just a sander block. Um, it's, uh, I don't know what the grit is, but it's a fine grit, uh, so it's for sandpaper. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to show you how I sand this a little bit, but really, um, it's not a rocket science on this one. You just want to go over it uh, on all the places that you're going to do another coat and the main reason is so that you want to get it nice and smooth uh, because from the first coat you'll be able to feel how um, sort of the grit of that MDF will come up uh, you can see it on my hand there but I'm gonna go ahead and just keep on sanding all this down uh, like that part that's all you need to do once you feel that it's smooth uh, and then what we'll do is we'll come back with a rag and then wipe it down 
sort of get that dust off a little bit uh, and then do another coat. So I'll be back. All right, guys. Coat two coming up. I uh, got my new, uh, this is new, um, although I just added some paint to it. So you get another uh, new roller. And uh, you won't need a lot of paint, so just add a little dab will do you. Uh, I'm not going to show all of this, but I uh, figured I would show a little. All right, so I mean, you just got to add a little bit, and we're just doing sort of a, a finishing touches, uh, nice, smooth finish here. Uh, because truthfully, this particular paint was uh, pretty thick, so that first coat was uh, was very thick. Um, And we just hit all the spots. And again, I won't show you all this, promise. Just gonna get this first little bit. All right? So, I mean, that's that's it. Just kind of eyeball it. Make sure it's all nice and no bubbles or anything are in there. You kind of run this over there a few times. Make sure it's all nice and smooth. That's what I end up doing a lot. It's just kind of like looking, making sure it's all nice and smooth. And there's the side. And I'll continue here in a minute. Uh, but that's a finished coat right there before it dries and then I just wanted to point out for the control panels um, what you may end up having to do is that uh, the paint will gather around these holes a little bit on that first coat so just take the piece of your 100 grit sandpaper or you can even go a little bit uh, uh, finer than that uh, I'm sorry this is not 100 grit is it what is this yeah, I think it's 100. And you can go finer than that if you want. You can go 200, 220, or whatever it is. Um, and uh, just kind of just kind of get that off, um, blow it out, and then uh, one more coat over top of that will be fine. But then you just got this nice and smooth here. So I just want to point that out. So I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, second coat on everything, and I'll be back. Um, that may be the conclusion of the, the painting, but I'll come back and show you real quick uh, what it looks like in the finished product. All right, there we go, folks. All painted up. It didn't take me very long at all, because uh, again, like it's like I said, it doesn't require a whole lot of extra paint. It's just a matter of uh, making sure it's nice and smooth over there. And uh, I think this looks really good. Interestingly, the bottom I I always like to make it look nice, although it's the bottom. But you know, you want to make it look good everywhere, um, even on the bottom. And I got my control panels all done. And as you can see, holes look nice all sanded down smooth and uh, another coat of paint put on them so that's it for the painting section um, I will come back with uh, I'm going to say probably the very last part uh, which will be all the electronics and uh, the testing and everything else so uh, until then I will uh, see you later bye all right we're gonna go ahead and uh peel this off so you can see the finished results. Um, so I'll just start right here at this corner. So you want to kind of just be careful. Try to keep your corner as nice as clean as possible. And you don't scratch it. It's important to, to do the peeling um, probably within 24 hours. Otherwise it seems to flake. Uh, and then you get it all over the place. So pull that off looking good looking pretty good and there we go okay so I'll hold that up so you guys can see that right so there's the one side now um, now I gotta peel this side off um, but I don't want to do that yet until I get to the point um, where I'm done because uh, I gotta put this on and off and on and off a little bit for adjusting uh, so I don't want to peel this off I want to protect this um, so I'm not going to peel it off now to show the full final results, but uh, see if I can kind of zoom in a little bit. But you kind of see the see how that looks. Let's pull this over here, All right? 
So it's got a nice crisp edge on there. And you'll see how it glosses once we pull this uh, side off here. But um, again, doesn't matter too much on this side, but the other side will end up looking really nice. So there we go. Uh, that's the end of the painting. And uh, there's the finished product right there. Uh, painted cabinet and painted bezel. And we'll be back for uh, part four with uh, the uh, electronics soon. All right, guys, that was part three, and I uh, hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned uh, something, uh, and just uh, the fact that you got to see how I do things uh, on this mini cocktail build. Um, I'll be bringing uh, part four here uh, pretty soon. i got to do the electronics uh, and start filming that. But um, just a side note, uh, I got myself some cool Space Invaders uh, coasters. Uh, for my cocktail table here, I got this up at that East Starland, if you haven't seen that video. Um, these are really cool little coasters, uh, Space Invaders characters, and um, I don't know, that was just a little side note, but I thought that was pretty cool. came in this little pack with a little Space Invaders looking thing, but uh, East Starland, pretty cool place, you should check it out. Uh, anyway, I'll be back later with uh, part four of the uh, mini cocktail step-by-step -step build. Until then, game on.